Welcome to Isaiah's Kitchen. Um, it's been a while since I've um, done a video, um, but today I want to start with um, I met Sunyas a lot in 2007, and he um, he was the one that actually showed me this lifestyle. And obviously, at first, I was very anti. I was like, no, but you know, I'm used to eating chicken. That's not it's not Latino enough. If you don't, if you don't eat chicken, um, and of course, you know, I used to use the term Latino because Latino was up to a, a level of identity for me that was both revolutionary and embracing blackness. Now, obviously, a lot of people don't see it that way, but um, I'll go into that in another video. So, uh, you know, I, I went to his class, and in his class, he actually had a health protocol. And this health protocol was unlike any other health protocol that I've ever seen because in college I had been exposed to veganism, but veganism, I always associated it with whiteness. I didn't associate it with black culture at all. So um, I was very intrigued when soon as, you know, there's this Puerto Rican guy from New York City, you know, being like, yo, I've been vegan for all these years. And I'm like, what? Like, and, and, um, and so I, you know, I had more questions and I kept coming to the class and, um, and in the protocol, is an amazing protocol because he goes through how to go he actually gives you how to transition into a vegan lifestyle being so-called latino being so-called puerto rican or so-called dominican or so-called asian or so-called african-american right and um it's interesting because years later i actually bumped uh, out in Queens, when I used to work out there, um, I, I actually bumped into some of Sunya's former students, and guess what? The first thing they said to me is like, oh, say peace to Sunya's, and um, I really thank him because of him, I'm now able to have this vegan lifestyle, and I was shocked. I was like, this, you know, this is actually working. And so, you know, a year later, I went right into it, and um, a year later, I, um, so it was 2007, I'm jumping now back to the past as I jumped into the future, 2012, I bumped into these former students of Sunya's. Uh, but now back to 2000, around 2008, a year of me transitioning into a vegan lifestyle, I actually was able to add on. And it's a beautiful thing, you know, having been able to add on to the health protocol, uh, health protocol and make it more complete, because I was able to then talk about, okay, so this is how you shop for food, for vegan food, if you're in the hood, if you're in, in your bodega, right? I'm used to going to the bodegas all the time. You know, those late night trips to the bodegas because they're open 24 hours a day. Um, and how to shop, like if you're vegan and like if you got EBT, if you, um, you know, how to, how to look for health food stores around your hood because unfortunately gentrification, even though we think it's happening now, that's been a work in progress since the 90s, okay? That's been happening. And of course, there's always been pockets of white people in areas, um, in, in, in hood areas. So it's not like we've never, it's, it's like white people have not, not been in the hood. They have, they've just been, you know, always the eclectic whites, the ones that didn't leave with the white flight into the suburbs right you always had the artists um, all these people that you know were hidden that we never saw until now I mean now it's because it's becoming an economic thing that's why it's so big um, you know and so with this I was able to to add on into these things and it correlates you know in the mathematics that I deal with number five is power and refinement now there's definitely a power right before five is cultural freedom so i learned an aspect of my culture and the power comes in the refinement that you give it so basically me adding on to this protocol giving it that living that living component to it from going from the mentality of the diet which soon as details completely and how to supplement and all these amazing things like really really amazing things and now i'm able to to add on in this way and it, it goes into the nature of man and woman if you really think about it man being that spark setting that foundation and the woman taking that and furthering the culture and giving it that that's what refinement is when you're able to just give it that elongated life to it and keep continue to propel it. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and go into the recipe. Um, I'm gonna be making vegan Dominican habichuela guisa. My prior video was moro de habichuela. Now you get to see, so how do you actually make the stew? 
Before I start the stew, I'm gonna go ahead because I am making some rice. I've had this rice in water for quite some time. This is long grain brown rice. The long grain brown rice is good to keep it in water for, you know, 15 minutes. Anywhere between 15 minutes to an hour is good. It helps with um, uh, release the, the coating um, of the, the shell of the, um, of the rice, which helps in the absorption of nutrients once you're digesting in the body. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take this water out because I already hear the water boiling back there. And I don't take all the water out. I leave some of it because some has already evaporated in here. Okay. So I put in this rice. And I know that a lot of people, um, you know, are like, well, if you're dealing with brown rice, can you still make con con? Con con or pegao, as Puerto Ricans call it, um, is basically the sticky portion of the rice that um, ends up. Uh, at the bottom once you cook it on the plate excuse me and um and so yes you can my answer to that question is yes you can what I'm doing right now is I usually put a little bit of oil you gotta put some fat into this so I put coconut oil and I bought that Crisco most likely Crisco you know it's not one of those uh uh it's, it's not one of those, you know, righteous companies, but it's the cheapest one. It was like $7 at the supermarket. And, you know, this is a part of the protocol is how to shop the cheapest but still healthy and still um, organic. So it is an organic oil. And now I'm putting about half a tablespoon, tea, teaspoon of salt in the rice. See, now... Usually, when you make white rice, you have to let it boil and have the rice soak up all that water. With brown rice, it's not like that. Um, I'm using two cups of rice and three cups of water, okay, for the long grain brown rice. Once it starts boiling, I lower the fire to low or low medium, and then I just put the cover in it, okay? So I see it boiling now. I'm going to put the cover, and I... Put it on low medium, okay, there. And I basically leave it there for about 40 to 45 minutes. Usually, depends on the rice too. Some rices are fast cooking, so you can even check in 20 to 30 minutes. Um, all right, so that's that with the rice, okay? I'm gonna go ahead to the meat of the recipe now, and um, this is the habichuela guisada. I'm gonna be using the following ingredients. This is West Indian pumpkin. Um, I grew up calling it Aoyama. And this is important. It's pivotal in the recipe, as you'll see later. And this is what it looks like. You know, I bought, I bought about a quarter of, because Aoyamas are like these big round root vegetable. All right, I'm going to be using, uh, I, use, I use red onions. In the other video, you saw me use the, um, the Cuban peppers, but I couldn't find any, so I bought bell peppers. They're just as good, um, but usually, right, you, for, for the habichuelas, you get the um, other peppers. Now, I'm going to be using these garlic I got it at Farmer's Market, so I'm going to be using two of these, okay? I'm going to go ahead and just, um, you can use two to three. Okay, I'm going to be using these three, and I'm just going to peel them now so they can be ready for me to put them into the mixture. Okay, um, and the final thing, if you see here, let me just pick this up. Okay, throw this into the garbage. And the last thing I'm going to be using are is the cilantro. The cilantro is extremely important. Um, now there's two varieties. There's the ancho and then there's the flore florecido one. <clears throat> Either one is fine. I'm going to be using both of them in this recipe. Usually I use this one when I can't find this one. one using one variety is fine, but it gives it more taste if you use two. And of course, I'm going to be using uh, beans, which were frozen, and now they're good to go. I took them out of the freezer. And um, yeah, we're going to go ahead. Um, now, the secret to making, or I don't know, 
other women might know this, you know, if you're Dominican and you grew up Dominican making this. But the secret that I learned growing up um, was that you actually have to mash uh, part of the beans, right? You blend them in this, in the blender, right? So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to get a spoon. All right, I got the spoon. Now you use some of the beans. You drop them in the blender. Obviously, right back in the days when they didn't have blenders, um, you would have to use a fork or anything. So as the beans were cooking, you would mash the beans kind of like that as they were cooking, okay? Now, I add some of the water in which it cooked in, just some, and then I add some regular water to the mixture. And a trick is just adding on all the other ingredients. So I'm adding the garlic. I'm adding half uh, of the onion. And I'm adding two pieces of pepper, okay? And I am adding some, a little bit of cilantro, not all, because it's better when you add it whole. And I rip out this. You don't really have to rip it out, but I like to rip it out when I'm about to blend. I'm going to clean this. And I'm cleaning this with my natural dish liquid soap. And if you notice, I mean, there's tons of ways in which you can clean your produce. Make sure that you always clean your produce because there's just nasty pesticides and people all over the place are touching this. This travels. But if you notice, this is really the same ingredients as the natural di um, produce washers that they sell. So um, it really does the same job, okay? So that saves you a lot of money doing that. So I put this in, right? Now, I'm gonna cover this. Before I put the blender to blend, I'm gonna turn on the stove here. I'm gonna turn this on. And I am going to add some oil. So I'm gonna start getting this things heated. Well, actually, let me take it out. And I have to wait until I didn't realize there was water in there. So it's fine. It'll evaporate. I took out. The great thing about coconut oil is that it's solid at first. And then it becomes liquid. So I'm going to go ahead and put the blender. And it's already connected. So I'm just going to turn it on. So yeah, you basically just let it blend for um, about a minute, may maybe less than a minute. And um, it's a, you know, it's interesting because this trick really helps not only thicken the, the, the stew, the guiso, but it's a great way if your kids find the beans nasty, it's a great way not to give them any of the, of the bean grains and they're still getting the vitamins from the beans because you blended some of them. So it's also a great way. I remember like my brother, he hated, hated uh, the grano uh, on the rice. So my mom, I, I, I think this is why she adapted this method was because, you know, he wouldn't eat the grano. And so she started to blend it. And not only did it add a great, it wasn't, not only was it great to thicken it, but um, he got, you know, all the minerals and nutrients he needed. All right. Now I am adding... I'm gonna lower the fire here because it's making too much smoke. And I'm just adding a little bit. I've added the old coconut oil. And now, even though I blended uh, onion and pepper, I still use two small pieces. And um, I'm adding it there and I'm letting it sofre in. So for it is just to let it um, release some of its juices onto the oil. And now, and I turn it around. going 
to add the beans themselves. to uh, uh, sizzle a little bit or simmer, I am going to add the other concoction that's in the blender, okay? This is after it starts to, to boil a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and get the ingredients that are in the blender. And I do see it on the sides. It's already started to sizzle a little bit. So that's enough time to add in these ingredients. So now I'm adding in what was blended. And one thing to do is there's still some left in here. So I like to add a little bit of water. Okay. And just go like that kind of pick up all the remnants and this will be put into the pot later on but you see it's kind of creamy so it gives it that creaminess now another thing that i will add on now is the aoyama i'm gonna place it inside the pot as well And I'm going to put a, a pot, the top over it, not the entire way, so that way I can see smoke, the smoke come out. And that's going to alert me that it's already started to simmer. And that's going to be a sign for me to come and move it and just continue to check up on it. So the beans are now um, on their first simmer. I have them on um, high first, but now I'm going to lower it to a low medium heat, right? And if you notice, they're simmering. And I'm just going to add a little bit more water. At this point, what I also like to do is add some salt. So I usually add about half a tablespoon of salt. Just put it in there. So the beans are now in their second simmer. I'm just gonna move them around a little bit. And right now I'm gonna check to see if the aoyamas got soft and they have. I just checked it with the fork. So what I like to do is I bring it up to the spoon and I mash them. And by the way, it's been 10 minutes, right, on low simmer, okay? So I'm gonna mash a little bit of the aoyamas and then the rest stay in their hole, okay? This is also gonna add texture to the, the guiso, to the stew, okay? And so this is the last one, okay? And I'm gonna turn it again. Now, two more things I'm going to do is, there was some water remaining in here, so I'm putting just a tiny bit more water, and I'm putting in some spices. Very important is the oregano, um, ground oregano. So I use about a pinch, which probably is about one fourth to a half of a teaspoon. And I also put some black pepper, ground black pepper. Unfortunately, I don't have fresh on me right now, but that one's preferred. I put some garlic, even though it already has garlic, but I also like to supplement it with powdered garlic. And two more things that I have to get in the fridge are, I get turmeric and I get agrio de naranja. All right, so agrio de naranja is basically sour oranges and you make you can make a vinegar out of it. That's another video in which I can show how to go about making that. 
So I add a little bit of agrio, right? Just about like half a teaspoon. And I'm also adding some turmeric, half a teaspoon of turmeric. And remember, like I said in the other video, I'm just gonna wash my hands because uh, turmeric, turmeric has a very, very obvious um, color. And um, so like I said in the other video, the basically these spices that I'm adding into these beans are, you're basically the spices that are in adobo. You got garlic, you have turmeric, uh, you have the pepper, okay? And um, something that I'm not using that the adobo has is bay leaves. I don't like the bay leaves because I feel like it sucks all the other ingredients flavors out. But um, maybe some other person has another experience. Now, I have a little secret that I don't even know if it's a secret, <laughs> but... um. I, my mom, what she does is she puts some sugar into the mixture and this gives it an added dimension of flavor that is just uh, off the meters. So this is about um, half a teaspoon of sugar, okay, into the mixture. And by the way, I am using organic sucanat. All right, you can use any kind of organic sugar you want. I do not advise white sugar because it's bleached. You don't want to be, you shouldn't be ingesting anything that's bleached in your body, okay? Even if it's so-called um, degradable by the body. Now, the last step is to put mm, the cilantro into the beans. And you basically let them soak there for one last simmer and then you turn off the beans. Right now, I'm just gonna taste the beans. Just one moment. My stove shut down. Um, but I'm, right now, what I'm gonna do is taste, taste the beans prior to And it's great. Um, I'm just going to now allow for the beans to simmer one last time with the cilantro in there. And I'm gonna check now on the rice so that um, it should be done by now. So you see, it is done. The rice has soaked up all the water. And it's nice and tender. And you see there's something stuck there. And that's the concon, which I will show you in a few. So now I've moved all the rice into a serving bowl, okay? And I'm just gonna set it aside. And what's left here, if you notice, this is the concon, okay? This is the, the, the concon, and you know, people thought that it is not possible to make brown rice concon, but you definitely can. I like using a fork to kind of just you can definitely use a spoon too. And there you have it. This is the this is the concon. Okay, you can um, I have it under low fire. So basically, the concon, it's a there's a pre preliminary concon already after the rice has boiled. Automatically, there will always be some rice that sticks to the pan. But uh, to make it more crispier and to make more rice stick to the pan, then you basically leave the 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 low light on. You leave it on low. Yeah. And then it makes this crispiness, okay, which is delicious to go with the beans. Now, let's check on the beans. And if you notice, it is simmering. Now, this is ready. The beans are ready. I'm going to turn them off. It is this deliciousness. If you notice, it has a nice brownish color. The aoyama is there. Uh, the, you, you have the, uh, you see the pepper here. The onion should be in there somewhere. 
and um, the flavors are all good. And yeah, and that's it. That's your, that is the end result of the beans. Now, I wanted to, I wanted to end this video by saying that, uh, that the oranges of habichuela guisa, that's all African. Stews, soups, that comes from, straight from the motherland. And because of the African influence, because of the uh, direct ancestry that we Soko Latino have, to Africa, all these dishes get inherited into our into our uh, modern culture, and so they're they're very delicious. Usually, beans are served with what Dominicans refer to as la bandera, and la bandera is just basically rice, beans, and then a meat. Obviously, right? Being vegan, um, I would serve it with either um, a not a meat substitute. You can do some vegetables. Um, I like to do tofu. That's another video, and um, or seitan or some sort of uh, uh, meat substitute that is not soy processed. See, there's whole soy is good, soy processed is bad. So, with this, I leave you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, and I'm, I'm not gonna serve the beans, but I'm pretty sure you got a good look at them. And um, thank you, and peace. So this is what the food looks like served. Peace.